Okay, so, higher order polynomials, we might be able to this. Um, we're going to uh, do this a bit more in depth later, um, not that much later, like next week or the week after. Um, but this is just a little bit of a poke into it, just so you know what to expect. Cool, alright. I've got x to the 4 minus 8x. Do we have any idea what that looks like? Oh, no. No, right, we haven't done powers of 4 and up yet. Right, no, I'm skewed. Cool, alright. Based on what you do with quadratics and cubics, what might be a good idea? Factor of something, right? Okay. Uh, when you say 2. The factor is 2, so that means x equals negative. Oh, okay, so you're saying a solution is 2. Yeah. Yeah, so if x equals 2, this whole thing goes to 0. Yeah, yeah? okay, that is true. Um, that means it's x minus you can, you, you totally can do that. Before you even go that far, alright? Can we just look at that and factor it a bit? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Right, you can take an x out straight away. Alright, which I'm not so happy with that one. Oh. So I can do that. Cool, okay, that's good. Well, yeah, that's fine. Um, there we go. Cool, great, okay, so based on this guy here, do we know something about this graph? Right, it has to go through the origin, right? Because if x is 0, great, I've got one of my. Uh, intercept. Cool, alright. x cubed minus 8. Can we factor that? Yes. Yeah? Okay. What, how are you going to factor it? Um, we're going to um, do cube 8 squared. Cube 8 squared. What do you mean, cube 8 squared? Okay, difference of perfect squared. Difference of perfect squared. Okay. If two things. Um, that's not a square. Oh. Alright, but you are on the right track. There is such a thing as difference of two cubes. Alright? Um, so, we could do that. I'll look up the formula for it because I never remember it correctly. I always have to backwards engineer it every time. Um, so, we can do that. Based on the fact that we don't know a uh, difference of two cubes off the top of our heads, how else could you go about it? It was what you were thinking about before. Oh, that factor in the... Right, I know that if I put 2 in this, it'll work. Yeah. Right, so I could divide this by x minus 2. Right, and then do polynomial long division to sort out. Do you have to divide um, the up brackets x? Say again. So when we divide it all by 2, do we have to divide that x from the outside? Oh, this guy? Yeah. You're, you could do it either way, but you only want to divide this bit. Okay. Right, so you don't need to bother with this guy hanging around. You're just going to end up back out there again anyway. Uh, difference of two cubes, since they always forget. Do we have to lose difference of two cubes? You don't have to. Um, it comes up so rarely um, in this that it's just not uh, overly useful. And could you also potentially use um, that that method, that long division method, with that um, x fourth? Already do. That's difference of two cubes. Um, I wouldn't be too fussed about trying to commit that to memory um, because it'll come up so rarely that it's just doesn't matter. Uh, oops. So I've still got pure x out the front. Now we've got x minus 2 because this is 2 cubed. x squared minus 2x uh, plus 4. Cool, so we've got that. Okay. Uh, from there, can we uh, factorise this last bit? Yes. Yeah, okay, what are you going to do? We can do quadratic, um, we can do recognition. Recognition, okay, are there two numbers that multiply to positive 4 and add to negative 2? Oh, no, I'm just going to do complete the square. Okay, so we'll, go, we'll try completing the square, alright, fine. Here we go, next, minus 2, and this thing is going to be x 
minus 1, square will give me 1, I need 4, plus 3. Cool, okay. Can I turn that into a factor? Or a pair of factors? No, why not? Because uh, the 3 is a positive, which means you end up Right, I've got a positive 3 here, so three. I'm never going to be able to move it around unless Maybe you go into contact. Sorry? How'd you get the positive 3? A positive three. So, okay, if I expand out this bit, I'll get x squared, I'll get minus x twice, right? And then I'll have negative one times negative one is plus one, but I need to end up with plus four. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's right, yeah, that's about Cool, okay, great. So we don't really know what this guy's looking like, right? But we know what these two are doing. So, around. This is going through zero, so we have to go through there. This is going through positive two, so it has to go through there. Cool, okay. This is a bit more fiddly. Until we do a bit of calculus, this isn't going to be particularly useful to us. Uh, which, yeah, it should just look like that thing. Uh, it'll be a bit lopsided, but. Yep, just lopsided. We end up with something that looks something like that. Cool. Okay. Fine. Well, let's have a go with the next one. All right. What would you? Do we know what it looks like straight out of the gate? No. Okay. What would you like to do? Right, take out a common factor, 2x squared. Cool, so we get x squared minus 4. Okay, great. Can we do anything more with it? Yes. No. You can do difference of perfect squares. Right, now I've got a difference of two squares. Cool, okay. So, I can turn that into x plus 2, x minus 2. Brilliant. Okay, have I fully factorised this thing? No. That's a factor, that's a factor, this is a repeated factor, but it's still a factor, and then that's just a scalar. Okay. Sure. Great, alright. Cool. Didn't need to get that low, but it doesn't matter. Cool, okay, well, this thing's telling me I go through zero. This thing's telling me I go through negative two. This thing's telling me I go through positive two. I should have labeled this before. Uh, no, so This is a normal factor, this is a squared factor. What happened with squared factors? Yeah, right, you get a bounce. Okay? Um, everything's all positive, so we're going to end up going positive. Okay, fine. This is a normal factor, so it'll shoot through. Alright, it has to come back to get to here. This factor was squared, so it'll bounce. Cool. This will shoot straight through. So we get sort of like a W. That's equivalent to 
A plus B, A minus B. Okay, what's A in this case? X minus 2. So it would be the square root of this thing, right? I've got a power of 4, so the square root of that's going to drop down to 2. So it's going to be X minus 2 to the power of 2. All of that is A. So we get uh, X minus 2, all to the power of 2. That's just A. Oh, and then you get dots with that. Plus, what's B if this is minus 1? Um, 1. 1. All right, cool. So that's all of this bracket. Next bracket, all of A again. Uh, minus B, so minus 1. Okay. Cool. Can we do anything else from that? Yeah. Yeah? Right, we can do dots with this guy again. Can we do anything with this? Yeah. Can get our force for script? Probably not. Right, that's got the same problem as this guy. Oh, no. Right. Okay, so we'll leave him still now. <sighs> this guy turns into what difference two squares again? So I've got x minus two plus one as one set of brackets. Uh, x minus two minus one as the other set of brackets. Oh, this. Expand out this stuff, so we've got oh, actually x minus one, x minus one, and x minus three, x minus three. Cool, fantastic. Uh, so maybe just maybe we can draw some stuff here. Okay. Is there anything obvious? Yes. Yep. What do you got? Um, your x intercept. Right, x intercepts of um, positive one. Plus one. Positive three. Plus three. And um and um what's it called? Minus two. No, um, minus one. Okay. So I've got that. Sweet. Alright. Well, there's one other thing that I would have you look at. This form up here. What? Yeah. Good morning, class. Right. Um, right. Uh, this form here, if I change that into a Q, right, have we drawn that before? Into a what? If I change it into a power of 3 instead of a power of 4. Yeah. We've drawn that before, yeah? What does it do? Just turning point. Yeah. Turning point. If it's a cubic, is it a turning point? Oh, no, it's just the inflection. Inflection, right? So it's right. If it was a power of two, what would it be? It would be the turning, turning point, right? So there's, there's this weird thing where it's like, oh, it doesn't really matter what the power is. It's got this uh, special it's got ability. This, yes, special ability. Okay, sure. It's got this um, property about it that whenever it's in this form, these guys tell us something. Okay. Oh, and that's the next point. So that would be two negative one. Must be some kind of turning or inflection. Okay. Two, negative one. Put that down there. Cool. Okay. Is there some other point we could figure out that might be useful for plotting? Yes. Y intercept. Y intercept would be useful, yeah? Right? Because every other one, the y intercept was at zero. This one, we haven't figured out where it actually runs through yet. Cool. How do we get the y intercept? You, um, you let it equal zero. Right. Just sub in zero for x. Cool, 0 minus 2, negative 2, to the power of 4, 16, 16, 16 minus 1, 15. So it's way up there somewhere. Cool, if you were to have a guess, what is this, maybe, what does this look like? A parabola. Right, it looks a bit like a parabola. Wait, but it doesn't. Yep, the only, if we're going to be pedantic about it, it's a little bit flatter at the bottom. Why? So, do we remember when we were drawing um, 
uh, single x, x squared, x cubed, x to the 4, x to the 5, x to the 6. Right? The higher up the power went, the flatter that bottom bit seemed to get, and then the steeper it went after that. For that reason, it's, it's a bit flatter at the bottom. Right? Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty much the exact same as everything else. <coughs> but yeah, if you drew that as just a parabola, fine. I'm not particularly worried about it, because you've got the important points, and that's what we're worried about. Cool. Next guy. Any thoughts? Uh, yeah. Take eight, take the front. Right, take eight. Right. Always look for a nice, easy factor whenever you can find one. Four minus x squared plus one. Okay. Okay. Now, um, now you can um, long division find the Okay. So we might need to resort to long division at this point. Okay, there's one other thing that you can do for this. No, I'm going to do a nice little thing. Let x squared equal, I'm going to change it into a capital X. Nice. Right. I'm so glad you asked. Oh, would that mean it would be 3 squared minus x plus 1? Right, so this is. I'm just going to look at this purple again. Right. So now that becomes 3x squared minus x plus 1. Uh, right? Are we familiar with that sort of question? Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. It's quadratic, yeah? Cool, okay. Well, hopefully we're more comfortable with quadratics than cubic, er, uh, than quartics. Oh, do you have to, like, t t um, do you have to um, turn it back into that form at the end of it? So would you have to times it all by like x squared? Yeah, in the end, yeah, the capital X is going to turn back into x squared when you come back. Yeah. Okay. Cool, okay, so we can try this. Alright, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out a 3, because it's not going to end up going too nicely, no matter what you do. Cool, complete the square. Uh, x minus 1 on 6. Square gives me 1 on 36, and I've got like 12, so I need 11 on 36, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, 36, 12, 12, I've got one, yep, okay. Cool, I've got this. Point of it is, I've ended up with a plus there. What does that tell me? It tells you that I'm best to find an answer. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, it tells me that I can't take it any further, true. And since I can't take it any further, am I going to be putting any intercepts in? I no, right? For the same reason as that guy and that guy. Right? It doesn't give you intercepts. Cool. So therefore, this thing equals open. Uh, oh, I can take that three up front. And then we've got in the half bracket open x squared minus one on six squared plus. 11 on 36, close. Right. And then it's not going to get any better from that, I don't think. I don't think. Very pretty. Oops. Make sure. Which one was this? This was that. Yes, it's going to be upward. Cool, okay. Zero, right? It runs through zero because I've got a pure x sitting out here. So it must run through zero, zero. Beyond that, is there anything obvious? Um, any prediction? Not really. This isn't even like, we've still got an x squared trapped in here. This this isn't looking too good. Right? Turns out this one happens to look kind of like a cubic. Uh. But it's not at the same time. So sometimes you can't get there until you do. Uh, calculus stuff. So what do we do when that happens? Uh, we've got to wait another while yet before we tackle it with calculus to know exactly how it twists and turns. So what do you do if this question pops up on the test? Do you just it won't. Oh, okay. I'm not going to give you things like this. This is just to say, hey, we can look at this and try to do stuff, 
right? Sometimes, for now, sometimes you'll end up in these complicated scenarios. All I care about is that it runs through zero, zero. Did you do if um, dots with um, that x squared minus um, minus 6? This guy? Yeah. Yeah, you can if you want, but it's not going to go particularly far. Uh, so we could get 3 x open. Uh, difference of 2 squares. So this is the uh, plus uh, root 1 6. x minus root 1 6. Uh, plus 11 on 36 is still in there. Right, because you still got this trapped in there, these aren't factors. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it's not particularly useful. Right. Um, so this is one of those annoying ones where it's not, you can't do it from this early on, at least not as well. Cool. All right. You'll get something, you'll be like, I have no idea what that looks like. And you just go, well, is there X's everywhere? Yep, great, okay, I'll take that out. And then you just look at what's left and you go, okay, can I take anything else out? Can I look at this and go, oh, hang on, this is different to two squares, or hang on, I can do polynomial long division, or whatever it is. Yep. What's the other way to work out um, the first and the third one without using the um, difference of the cubic things or something? Uh, this one, since it's in this form, yeah. you automatically know it's going to look like that. Yeah. All right. um, so you don't even need to factorize it really, you can just go straight through. Um, although, okay. so to get these x intercepts, you can just make this thing equal zero. Move the one across, four through to one is positive and negative one. Move the two across, so you get two plus and minus one. Two plus and minus one is one, sorry. Yeah. So you don't even need to bother with all this. Right, but it doesn't hurt, it just gives you more confidence in what you're doing. Uh, so forget that. So that one can be shortcutted a lot. This one. You can. Uh, oh no, you can't stop there because you need the other factor. Well, it depends if you can see it or not. This one, okay, so either you can do that and then go to there. Or from here, you can do polynomial long division on. You can do polynomial long division on that bit. Right. Right, and just two, you already know two is going to work, so that'll work out. And you'll still end up here. Oh, sorry, you'll end up there after polynomial long division. But polynomial long division takes up a fair bit of space. Knowing this saves you the time. Right. So you've got it in there. The red bit, you don't have to learn that per se, because if you can, there's a whole lot of other ways around it. Yeah. Um, it's just handy if you do know it. But then it's handy if you know your 17 times tables up to 29. Yeah. But the, like, the number of times that's going to come up, it's just not worth worrying about overly. Oh, so is this going to pop up on this? Uh, difference of two cubes might, but because you've got other ways of dealing with it, you don't have to know that okay. specifically. Okay. Okay. Um, you can memorize it if you want, and then when you see it, the one out of a hundred times, you'll be like, oh sweet, I can actually do this for once. And those are the formula for dots for each um, polynomial. Uh, Square, cube, four, fifth, six, seven, twenty-nine. Uh, not for fear, um, and not for other so. Okay, if it's even powers, yes, there'll be a, there's always a way of doing it. And then if it's powers that are multiples of three, there'll be ways of doing it. If it's not like power of five, then there's not necessarily a straightforward one for it. Okay. Um, but it depends. You can usually factor it and then use either difference of squares or cubes if it fits that form in the first place. So there's a lot of it depends in that. Um, which is very much where we're getting to at this stage because now you've got a whole lot of different things and it just depends on what's come up. You just go, oh, I'll use the wrench or I'll use the hammer or whatever. Yep. You can also use um, that um, last trick that let x squared equal um, capital X. Yep. Um, can we use that in other? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you can always do that sort of stuff. You can make a substitution, it makes life easy for you. Can we make that in the first one? Uh, 
Uh, okay, what do you want to sell? Um, X, it's capital, um, X squared, it's capital X. Okay, what do I turn this into then? Oh, it'll be X, like half. Right, it'll be the square root of X. Is that going to make it easier or hard? It'll make it harder. It'll make it harder. So in this case, not useful. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's one of those things. You look at things and go, oh, I really Oh, but you can do it in the second one, eh? Uh, yeah, you can do it on the second one. And then it'll make it way easier. Uh, okay, so uh, we get 2x squared minus 8x. By the way, it doesn't have to be a, an x, you can use whatever you want, an a or whatever. Just make sure you switch it back when you get to the end. Cool, so this becomes 2x squared 1 minus... Oh, sorry. x minus 8. Great. So that's the same as 2x squared, x squared minus 8, and then difference of two squares from there. Uh, Wait, what? Uh, this right? oh, this should be a 4. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was like, 2x times 8. My bad. Yeah. Uh, cool. And then we've got difference of two squares again, so 2x squared, x plus 2, x plus uh, minus 2. Cool. So we end up the same. So in that case, it wasn't particularly worthwhile. But with this one, we didn't really have any other way of going about it, so that's what it comes with a while. Cool, all right. We happy with that sort of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for the most part, this isn't going to get you to sketch them, right? I'm just doing this because it's an opportune moment to look at it and go, hey, you know how you know some stuff? This is why we're knowing this stuff. The last bit is what's called odd and even functions. So we'll start with even because it's easier. Even function uh, follow the following f of x equals f of negative x. Okay, and we'll put functions over here. Cool. F of um, negative x. Actually, I should write that the other way around. Yeah. It doesn't actually matter because it's the same thing, but just so that these things marry up. Equals negative f of x. Okay. So, what does this mean? It just means that if you put a negative value into an even function, you can basically totally ignore the negative. Alright, because it doesn't matter if you put a negative or a positive in there, you're going to end up with a positive version anyway. Right? Right, or alternately, if you put in a positive one, you'll end up with a negative one. They're the same. With an odd function, if you put a negative uh, value in, it's the same as though you put the positive value in and then made the whole thing negative. So there's just a special case of things. So, we'll give some examples of that. So, if we go um, f of x equals x squared. Okay. If I put in Keep it simple, we'll say let's put in positive and negative one. Alright, if I put positive one into that, what do I get? One. If I put negative one in? One. One as well, alright? So it follows this rule for one at least, and if you pick any number you want, alright, what's going to happen to that negative? Right, it's going to become positive because you're squaring it, alright? So this is the easiest version of that that you pretty much can think of. Well, it's supposed to execute. Okay, so what happens if you do x cubed? Okay, if I put in negative 1 into x cubed, what do I get? Negative 1 out, right? If I put 1 into this, what do I get? 1. 1. So if I put 1 in, I get 1. If I put in negative 1, I get negative 1. So when I put the negative of, so if I put in negative 1, I get the negative of f of 1. Yeah? Cool. Now, if I ask you, where's x to the power of 4 going to go? You're going to say it's going to be even. Even, right? Is there going to be a pattern? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? The name's kind of given away as well. Alright? Um, yeah, so all your even powers are going to be there, all your odd powers are there. However, if we do something like... Uh, plus minus x yeah. cubed. Yeah. If I do something like that, right, let's say I put 1 into that, I get 0. Right? If I put negative 1 into that, 
get negative 2. Uh, and then square? 4. 4. Is that the negative of the other one? No, we've got 0 and 4. So they're just totally unrelated. So this is neither even or odd. Wait, what? Oh, oh, because it's both. Uh, it's not both, it's just neither. Oh. Okay, Wait. so you get it's either even or odd or neither. The vast majority of things will be neither. Where how's it mother? If I put in, pick a number. Seven. Seven, okay. If I put seven into this, yes. right, I'll end up with 36. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's even. The, okay. Forget the even and oddness of the number that you're putting in there. Oh, round. okay. Right? So it has to obey this relationship that we call an even function. Right? So I go f of negative seven, I get what? 64. Well, those are not equal. So if it's not that, these are not the negatives of each other, so it's not one of those either. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so that's that. However, if I do that, right, that'd be 7, say. 7 squared, 49 plus 1, 50. Negative 7, negative 7 squared, 49 plus 150, it still works. Alright, if I go over here, um, oh, let's do that. Well, hey, pick a number, it doesn't matter. Two. Uh, okay, I'll put in two. Two cubed, eight plus eight, sixteen. Negative two cubed. Oh, wait, no, this isn't going to work, oops. Because I didn't think that one was working. That has to be the whole symmetry. Two in there versus negative two, you just get totally different results. 